How's that? Coming through? Okay. Good morning again and welcome to everyone. Welcome to Martin Luther on this beautiful morning for our outdoor service, our final one of the year, our friendship festival, and our pig roast. Having been inside this morning, I can say this is a good morning to be outside here, at least if you're in the shade. Feel free to move around if needed. We'll be worshiping according to the service that you have printed. The focus of our worship today is how we keep our lamps burning, doing the work of the Lord as we wait for Jesus' return. We begin by singing the morning hymn on page two. If you're able to where you are seated, I invite you to please stand for the morning hymn. to save me, O oh God. forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson today is from the prophet Haggai, chapter 1. We don't read from the prophet Haggai too often, and this lesson requires perhaps a little bit of historical introduction. There were three temples in the history of Israel, or three rebuildings of the temple. The first one was Solomon's, the second was Zerubbabel's, and the third was built under the supervision of King Herod. We are in the time of that second temple being rebuilt under Zerubbabel after the Israelites had returned from the Babylonian captivity. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but not, are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build a house, so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. 
You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people, they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue by singing Where Your Treasure Is. The congregation is invited to join in each time the refrain is sung, and our uh, choir will sing the verses of this hymn.
Our second lesson is from the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Jesus' words to one of the seven churches of Revelation, encouraging them to be alive as they wait for his return. Because outwardly they had the appearance of being alive, but inwardly they were not. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is God's word. Please stand for the gospel. The words of Jesus from Luke chapter 12. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come mm -hmm. at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. You may be seated for our hymn, which is on the next page. <laughs> and peace are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the reading from Haggai chapter 1 where he encourages the people to rebuild the temple. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, keep your lamps burning. That's Jesus' encouragement to us in our gospel for today. And there he used an illustration of that master who is returning from the wedding banquet. It will be good for the servants to keep the lamps burning. 
so that everything's ready when he returns. He wasn't going to be sending a text message ahead to say, I'm on my way. They needed to be watching. They needed to be ready. And, and how pleased that master would be if he found everything ready when he returned, if the door was immediately open for him and everything was ready. Jesus says he might even be so pleased that he would say to the servants, you have the rest of the night off. I'll take care of things from here on out. Keep the lamps burning. That's also Jesus' encouragement to us as we wait for his return. And so we need to ask, what does that mean for us to keep our lamps burning? In what way do we keep things ready? And I would suggest it's this. Build up the Lord's kingdom. Make it our daily work to build up that kingdom of the Lord in us and around us. And today we'll see exactly what that means. Build up the Lord's kingdom because it is your true treasure. And build up that kingdom doing so without fear. We turn to a certain time in history, as we mentioned before, when the children of Israel were, maybe in a slightly more literal sense, building up the Lord's kingdom. But God also points out to them how it was important to be doing this spiritually on the inside too. The kingdom of Israel lasted for oh, around 400 years. King David lived 1000 BC, and Jerusalem fell after suffering for a number of years, finally in 586 BC, when the kingdom of Babylon came in and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and destroyed that beautiful temple that King Solomon had built, Solomon, David's son. We're here after the people come back from Babylon. They were carried off into captivity, and for about 70 years, they were there departing in groups and also being allowed to come back in groups because that kingdom of Babylon had been taken over by the, the Medes and the Persians. And now the Persians said, it's fine to go back, go back to the land of Israel, rebuild the city of Jerusalem, rebuild the temple. And so here we are in about 520 BC, but there was a problem. The people needed some encouragement to actually complete this work that they were supposed to do. And what exactly was the problem that had kept them from completing the temple? Well, there were a number of things, but there's one that's pointed out in our reading from for, for today. Did you catch it? It's that life was getting just a little bit too comfortable for the people. They had become just a little bit too secure. The Lord says through Haggai, you're living in your paneled houses while my house lies still in ruins. And what did God want? God wanted that temple to be built again so that worship could take place, so that his word could be proclaimed, so that the sacrifices which pictured the coming Savior could be offered again. And that wasn't happening. People were living comfortably in their own houses but not taking care of the house of the Lord. If you and lived in a mud house, uh -oh. this would be a pretty nice thing, right, to have a, a house with wood paneling. Maybe that means that your house wasn't actually made out of mud bricks, but it was made out of wood, and things were getting comfortable for you. So Haggai's message to the people is this. You're looking for the, long, the, the wrong kind of security. Instead, turn to the Lord. Because what is that kingdom of the Lord? And how do you build it? The Lord wanted his kingdom to be most important to them. God wants his kingdom to be most important to us over all other things in life. And what is it? It's not something external. If you look around our planet, you will not see the boundaries of God's kingdom. The United States of America is not God's kingdom, although sometimes people act as if it might be. And certainly it's good when we have God's blessings. What is God's kingdom? It's a spiritual kingdom. It's where God rules inside of your heart, inside of my heart, by faith in Jesus. And we acknowledge Jesus as the king of our life and as our only Savior. That's the Lord's kingdom. God wants us to be building his kingdom. When Jesus returns, won't he be pleased if he finds us going about the work of his kingdom? Won't he be displeased if he finds us doing something else? So today we want to repent over all of those things that we've tried to build first. 
the Israelites were enjoying their leisure. And maybe that's the exact same temptation that, that we have today. We've been blessed in many ways, and the temptation can be to put our leisure, our enjoyment, as our highest priority in life. I suppose we need to be careful about how we speak here, right? Because God gives us blessings, and it's not wrong for us to enjoy them. We want to live a good life. Everyone who's ever lived has wanted to live a good life, right? And those are things that we pursue. But when does it become a problem? I suppose you could say it becomes a problem if something else is neglected. It becomes a problem if our priorities and our decisions are based more on, well, how can I serve myself than how can I serve God's kingdom? And that building up of faith in, in my heart and the hearts of others, too. And so we repent of, of those things. God wants first place, not second place inside of our hearts. God wants this, our, our time together, to be the highest part of, of our day, of our life, of our week. To join together, to hear his word, to sing his praises, to encourage one another. What could be better than that? What would Jesus not be pleased with about that? If he returned and found us doing his work. So when we look at every other priority that we have, and every time that we placed our own desires over the need of sharing the good news of, of Jesus in our world, we repent of, of that shortcoming, how we've fallen short of the glory of God. And we look for forgiveness that one dwells in the temple. You know, Haggai says that as the people lived for their own profit and prosperity, God was actually sending a judgment on them. He says a few times here, give careful thought to your ways. You've planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You expected much, but it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I, I blew away. God was actually saying to those people, he was frustrating the things that they were doing. So that as much as they tried to pursue what they thought they needed, God was going to take it all away. We confess, God, you should take everything away from us, too, for all those times that, that we've pursued what we love instead of, of what you love. Find forgiveness, though, my friends, in the one whose temple was rebuilt. Find forgiveness there in those sacrifices that were offered, pouring out of blood for the sins of the people as a sacrifice that we need to, the sacrifice that was offered Jesus, our Savior, when he gave his blood on the cross for you and for me. Find forgiveness there in that temple where God's word was proclaimed, his word of salvation that says, look to Jesus, trust in him that on the day when he returns, you don't need to claim your own goodness or lack thereof, but you can simply claim Jesus. He's my Savior. He's everything I need. And then, everything that we work for won't be like taking our earnings and putting them into a purse with holes in it so it all trails out on the ground behind us. Well, then we'll store up something that will be worth something in the life to come. Build up the Lord's kingdom, my friends, first of all, because it's your true treasure. And then second of all, we'll also build up the Lord's kingdom without fear. Back to Israel, 500s B.C., the neighboring people who had been living in the land to which they returned didn't really appreciate the fact that the Israelites were coming back. Those other people, known as the Samaritans, they did not appreciate this fact that Jerusalem was being reestablished and the temple was being rebuilt. In fact, at another time when they were rebuilding the city walls of Jerusalem, we're told that those people had to build those walls with their hammer or whatever tool it was in their right hand and their sword in their left hand to be ready for battle at any time. Apparently now things were a little better if they were building up their own houses, but the Samaritans did not appreciate them being there. They even wrote back to the king of Persia saying, can't you stop these people from doing this? And that's something that they had to contend with. And so I think it was a very good thing, a very encouraging thing, this word that they received through the prophet Haggai, where the Lord says, I am with you. What an encouragement that 
those plans that they had that maybe they worried about, maybe they had their fears, they knew those plans were not going to become enough, and those plans would not be in vain, but would succeed, because God was with them. And so it's just like Jesus tells you and me, have no fear, little flock, because the Father has been pleased to the kingdom. If God was for them, who could be against them? And if God is for us, who could be against us in seeking to do the work of his kingdom and seeking to build it up so that we can do so without fear? Certainly those Israelites had many fears. Just like immigrants coming to a new country, having to create everything from scratch all over again, having to fend off those enemies, they did their work trusting in the Lord. We also may have fears in life. We might wonder, is this kingdom work worth it? Because you can't always see the results. There was a time for building up a building, but now we're doing other things, right? We can't always see the results of the important work that we do, but yes, this is the work of the Lord. To build his kingdom, to share the good news of Jesus. We gather together, encourage one another as we live this life, servants of the Lord, waiting for our master to return. So the Lord assures us, your labor in him, it's not in vain. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. And so he will take care of your life. You don't need to worry. And even more, we have nothing to fear when Jesus returns. Isn't that Jesus' whole point? That's why he warned that church in Sardis in our second lesson for today. They had a reputation of being alive. They were doing all sorts of things. But were those things that built up the Lord's kingdom, or were they just being busy? Jesus reminds us of his coming also with this parable of the master returning from the wedding day. Those servants he will be pleased with who are ready and waiting when he returns. And so we think, of this truth that we want to hold in front of us each and every day. Jesus is coming again. Will we be ready when he comes? He's coming at an unexpected hour. Don't you love that way that Jesus expresses it? If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. Think about that for a while. Think about the logic there. You kind of have to twist it around and see what's the result. Well, therefore, you keep watch at all times, right? If you don't know when the thief is coming, you keep watch all times. And so do we. Because Jesus will return when his Father says the time has come. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he returns. Keep your lamps burning. If we focus on our own sins, that might bring us great fear. How can I stand before the Lord on the day of his glorious return? But when we focus on Jesus, our Savior, our fears go away because Jesus is the payment for the guilt of our sins. Jesus is our holiness and righteousness and redemption before the throne of our Father in heaven. And so we come back to the start, don't we? It's all about knowing our Savior Jesus and making him known. Build up the Lord's kingdom. That's our one true treasure. Keep your lamp burning, my friends, and then we'll be ready the day of our Savior's return. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds by faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We sing the hymn, Holy God, we praise your name.
10, we join in the responsive prayer of the church. O Lord, our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. We bring you our requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus talked with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit.
listening with us today on our Friendship Festival. Would you all please take a moment right now to greet those next to you who can be worshiped today and to introduce yourself to someone that you might not know. So next Sunday in our service, we'll have the installation of Mrs. Kate Schrader as our second grade teacher. Uh, Mrs. Karen Berg was installed as our pre-K teacher a couple of Saturdays ago. Mrs. Schrader will be installed this coming Sunday. Uh, some announcements for what's happening today. First of all, you may leave all the chairs and the sound equipment to uh, where it is for, for right now. We'll be using those chairs outside for the meal later. Uh, second of all, in your bulletin, there's a little fact sheet. If you return your bulletin, you might want to hang on to that for something that will be happening uh, later on. Or you may keep the bulletin too, that, that's fine. And then finally, um, in this time between now and when food is served, you're certainly invited to visit, we are going to have some uh, guided tours of our school. If it's been a while since you've been in there, or you never have been, or you've been there all the time, you're still invited to see and uh, go along and, and see how the classrooms have been prepared for the upcoming school year. And if you'd like to do that, I invite you just to remain here, and some tour guides will come up and organize however many groups we, we might need. Uh, the food today will be served around 11, and we do invite people to uh, visit uh, until then. And are there any other announcements that I should be making? Okay, there will be tables outside to sit at. There will also be some tables in the school commons where it's air conditioned in case we benefit from that. Anything else? All right, if you'd like to participate in a tour, you're invited to uh, remain out here in those who are organized. May the Lord bless your day. Continue to visit if you like.